One Day Fantasy Sports seems like a simple enough game. You have players from a bunch of different positions, and it would appear that the way that you would maximize your probability of winning is simply to choose the player from each position that is projected to score the most points. But it turns out that One Day Fantasy is more complicated. As soon as those projected points are no longer guarantees, but are rather probability distributions, things get much more difficult. Let me explain. Imagine that this one day fantasy game is about players who stop things professionally. You have to choose a goalkeeper, either Tim's, who is guaranteed to be worth six points, or Ole, who is guaranteed to be worth negative three. You must also choose a goaltender. And there, the two possibilities are Jerry, who will guarantee you 12 points, and Goldberg, who would guarantee you 8. There are three choices at catcher. Consisti, worth a guaranteed 10. High EV, who will score 16 points 60% of the time, and 6 points 40% of the time. And Vary, who will score 20 points 40% of the time, 8 points 30% of the time, and goodness me, negative 40 points 30% of the time. The last position is Wicketkeeper. De Richards is worth a guaranteed 20, whereas Shirt will score 21 points 50% of the time and 19 points 50% of the time. Here's how it works. Each of us will secretly choose one player from each of these positions. Then the games will be played, and whichever one of us has scored the most points will win. And if we've scored the same number of points, it'll be a tie. Your puzzle for today is to think about how to play this game. And while you do that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today might come as a surprise, but you need to think about mixed strategies at a level of complication that I cover in Chapter 3 of Game Theory 101, The Complete Textbook. Are you ready for the solution? It turns out that a lot of this game is straightforward. At goalkeeper, you definitely want Tim's over Ole. There's no benefit to having someone that's going to score negative three points when you get someone that has plus six instead. Same thing with the goaltender. Jerry is always better than Goldberg. The wicketkeeper question was a red herring. It doesn't matter whether you have De Richards, who's the guaranteed 20, or a 50-50 shot at 21 versus 19 with Shirt. The one total point difference that could arise between us, depending on who we pick, will not ultimately be pivotal to who wins the overall match. So we can ignore that one. In actuality, all this game comes down to is whom we select at catcher. Let's start working through that problem. If you compare high EV to consisty, high EV wins 60% of the time. That's because consisty is a lock at 10, and 60% of the time, high EV will score more than that, and 40% of the time, high EV will score less than that. So it seems that you would not want to choose consisty ever when you could choose high EV instead. Now let's compare Consisti to Vary. This time, Consisti wins 60% of the time. That's because 40% of the time, Vary will score more, and then a combined 60% of the time, whether it's from 8 points or negative 40 points, Vary will score less. Based on what we've seen so far, and the notion that transitivity would seem to apply here, it must be the case that high EV beats Vary, although the percentage of the time that that would be the case may be complicated because there are a lot of different possibilities up there. But it turns out that that intuition is wrong. Let's actually map this out. In orange, we have Vary's possibilities, and in yellow, we have high EVs. 
because Very will score 20 points 40% of the time, and High EV will score 16 points 60% of the time, then there is a 24% chance that Very emerges triumphant 20 to 16 in this head to head matchup. We can continue going down the line and plot out more of those probabilities. For example, there's an 18% chance that high EV will score 16 and Vary will score only 8, meaning that high EV would win under those circumstances. If we do that for the remaining four different possibilities, we can then sum all of those together and figure out who wins more often in a head to head matchup between high EV and Vary. And if you look at Vary right here, there's a 24% chance plus a 16% chance, plus a 12% chance. And if you do your addition, that means that Very actually beats High EV 52% of the time. Thus, we have discovered a non-transitivity. High EV beats Consisti, Consisti beats Very, but Very beats High EV. This is an application of something known as non-transitive dice. And what it means is that there is no singularly best choice. In fact, if you played this game A strategically, you can be taken advantage of. For example, if I predicted that you were certainly going to choose high EV as your choice, because high EV does have the highest expected value, then I could choose very and I would win 52% of the time. I would have a clear edge. But strategic players would recognize that and adopt a different strategy. Here we see a payoff table, which lists the probabilities of victory given what one player on the rows chooses and one player on the columns chooses. Being strategic here means sometimes choosing consisty, sometimes choosing high EV, and sometimes choosing vary. When you're randomizing across all three of those strategies, your opponent will be unable to exploit you by adopting the correct counter strategy. This is essentially a glorified game of weighted rock, paper, scissors. And in game theory, we have a way to calculate what the probability is you should choose among each of those three strategies to prevent your opponent from exploiting you. The basic idea is that if you choose probabilistically among those three strategies in a way that makes your opponent indifferent between choosing consisty, high EV, or vary, you're guaranteeing yourself a 50% chance of winning and thereby forcing your opponent to be unable to exploit you by adopting the proper counter strategy. There's a specific algorithm you can use to calculate that probability. And if you want to see it in action, you can take a look at the video description below. But if you work through it, the distribution is 1 11th on consisty, 5 11ths on high EV, and 5 11ths on vary. You can verify this quickly by noting that 0.5 times 1 11th plus 0.4 times 5 11ths plus 0.6 times 5 11ths is equal to 1 half. And same thing for 0.6 times 1 11th, 0.5 times 5 11ths, and 0.48 times 5 11ths, as well as 0.4 times 1 11th, 0.52 times 5 11ths, and 0.5 times 5 11ths. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.